Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna Maria Vartu. I am a fine artist living in the Netherlands and on this channel I want to show and tell you a lot of things about my art and art business. Um, so actually I haven't painted in a very long time or at least it feels like a very long time. Uh, the last painting I made uh, was uh, a demo in my lesson and before that the apple trees I painted here in Varfum where I live. Um, last week the children were ill so I didn't have time to paint um, because I, they couldn't go to the daycare. And um, this week I also have a very busy week so I'm doing all kind of things related to art but not the actual making of anything uh, worth seeing. Um, in this video therefore I wanted to, to uh, touch a topic that I see a lot of artists struggle with and that is the topic of loneliness. Um, in real life, but also on YouTube, I hear artists saying that um, being an artist is a lonely existence. Um, and while obviously it's true that when you're painting in your studio, you are alone. And if you spend a lot of time painting, then you are alone. <laughs> um, I don't think in itself the art business is uh, is a lonely one. I don't think being an artist means that you uh, you are lonely or alone a lot of the time. Um, and obviously it depends what you do as an artist. If you uh, have a few galleries who do all the work for you, <laughs> um, marketing wise, uh, and you really spend most of your time in your studio and don't see anyone, that, that, yeah, that would also be uh, lonely to me. Um, but I find that since I started making the choice, since I made the choice to uh, be an artist, so uh, when I went to art school, then I immediately felt surrounded by people who uh, had the same interest and, um, and who felt the same. So more like-minded people around me. And uh, the moment I decided to be an artist uh, was actually the end of a period I felt very lonely. Um, so in this video today, I want to show you some parts of, uh, of artist life uh, that involves seeing other people going out there. And, uh, and I think that these are things that I do very, very often, um, maybe more often than uh, working on my own. Uh, so in this video, uh, I will show you a few shots of, uh, of my art course, which I give um, uh, once every week. Actually, I have been doing it more often in the past, before uh, the children came. Uh, but I really like uh, like it right now, uh, going in the evening, even if I'm a bit tired in the evening. Going in the evening allows me to uh, share my passion with others uh, while not taking away time from the actual painting and creative process which I do uh, during the day, obviously. Uh, so yes, I, I teach and um, teaching art is very very important to me. I, I like it because other people show me uh, their ways of seeing things uh, but also by having to think a lot about what I do uh, in order to explain it properly to uh, others I constantly remind myself uh, of um, things I must watch out for and uh, ways to solve uh, problems during uh, the painting or drawing process. Uh, so I think it's great and uh, when I get uh, come home from a session of teaching, I, I feel very energized. Uh, it also costs a lot of energy because you are constantly looking at other people's work and uh, 
coming with new insights <laughs> and uh, adjusting uh, your own way of seeing and doing things in order to uh, give the right advice to other people. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the way in which I can really um, be uh, with others and uh, s still do what is dearest to me. So um, the other thing I did, which I don't have any footage uh, of, but I wanted to tell you that it is also something um, uh, yesterday I went to uh, to a studio, uh, JAV Studios. It's called. It's here in uh, in the Netherlands in uh, Gieten. A really good um, photographer made scans, uh, very high quality scans of uh, of a few of my works. It was the first time for me to do this, uh, but I told you in another video that I want to um, to make art prints. And uh, I must have really good uh, photographs and uh, reproductions. So I went over there and it was, uh, it was very special um, because this photographer was really precise and together we could like, fine tune the colors. And I was so impressed by uh, the way uh, he could make the texture of uh, of the paint because you know I like to use bold brush strokes. Well, the texture of that paint of those brush strokes really was so um, almost tangible on uh, on the screen. So I look, uh, I'm really looking forward to get the actual images. Uh, he's gonna work on it some more. Um, but so I was away the whole day because we had to do uh, six paintings and uh, it took us, took us half a day to get everything right, all the colors and values uh, and uh, sharpness right. So um, that's the way to go out. I'm also teaching uh, here in, uh, in uh, Warfum uh, for just a very short course of four lessons. Uh, but that's uh, that's a younger audience, which I also like. Usually I have people who are above 50. Um, that's the, my main audience, let's say, uh, when it comes to teaching. Uh, and there's nothing wrong uh, about that. But once in a while, it's nice to have some young people as well, uh, because they... Um, yeah, they tend to be a bit quicker to uh, to understand things, and they uh, they are bolder and often less afraid um, to to experiment. I d yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> but that's the way it is. Um, at least uh, based on my experience as a teacher. So, and uh, today I actually wanted to go and. Uh, paint outside, uh, but well, but <laughs> um, because last week I went to sketch in this very beautiful old uh, and yeah old orchard which is uh, near to uh, the place I live. Uh, in my garden, the apple tree is blooming, and in this orchard, therefore, I thought, oh well, I have to go now because uh, every uh, thing will be in bloom. Uh, so I went there to sketch uh, last week with the intention to go and paint there on Friday. But since my children were ill, I couldn't go. Yesterday I couldn't go because I had to go in this photo to this photo studio. And today the weather is too unstable. So I hope the bloom will remain for a little bit longer. And obviously that coming Friday uh, when I have a new working day, uh, the weather will be nice enough uh, to paint because it's too too beautiful not to capture in uh, well live. Uh, so I want to do that today, but I couldn't. So I went to the frame maker and I took my camera with me to show you a bit of the process. So that is what I want to show you today. Ik heb een tijd aan de. 
Nou, ik heb weer een nieuw ding om bij gekomen. Ja, ik zag al uh, je zenuwen. Uh, groen en uh, ook groen. Maar het is in ieder geval wat uh, leuks. Ja, dus die ouderwetse cultuur. Oh ja, en die is er ook. Nee. <laughs> <laughs> ik, ik vind het wel mooi van u en dan. Heel goed. So I'm back from uh, from the shop and uh, the art supply shop from Big Art uh, in Groningen where I always uh, go to get my stuff. They didn't have my titanium white again so I must order it online because I can't paint without my white. And I bought um, the crayons I was talking to you about. These. Can you see it? Yeah, I hope so. Yes, I, I hope they, they, they are just as good as the ones my children have. Uh, they have some very big ones, which obviously is very uh, nice and easy to hold. Um, but I wanted some higher quality ones uh, because the ones my children have, some of the colors don't give as much color as they did in the start. So. That's a bit weird, but um, it's, a, it's a good brand, but I don't know why it, it isn't working like it should. I would have preferred to have slightly um, larger ones, but they only had these. So, uh, well, let's, uh, let's see what I can do with it. And I also bought um, some new varnish because um, my own the varnish I have is turning yellow. I don't know if you uh, you are an artist and you use uh, a picture varnish which is glossy and it turns yellow. If you know anything about it uh, and as to why it turns yellow, then please let me know. I always stored it in a dark place, so it, it's it's weird and I, I don't want to use it when it's yellow, uh, but it's too bad because it's quite a lot. I will show you one moment. Can you see it? It is, this one is new, it's totally clear, and this one is like pea color. <laughs> Disgusting. Anyway, I bought some new, uh, new one. Uh, I, I tend to like uh, matte varnish more, but uh, I heard from a lot of people that they prefer to have the, the glossy, um, the glossy one because it feels more luxurious so well i don't know uh, and i also found a funny little uh, dépliant about painting in sardinia which i wanted to go and check out later um so these uh these ones i uh, i bought because i was working on this idea for um, for another picture book, yeah, very stupid because I didn't even uh, get a publisher yet or uh, published uh, my first picture book about Sheep Brebella. 
uh, and I really have to get some good re reproductions uh, of those watercolors as well. So I was working on this idea for a picture book, uh, which I did already a year ago. I think I made a, a storyboard with um, a few very quick sketches and some lines. I can't show it to you because it's all very secret. No, I'm joking, but it, um, I will show you when I'm more, I'm f uh, further in the process, which I do want to show you is the color sketches uh, I made. So I was just um, trying out some colors uh, with those crayons. And this is my, uh, my son's work also in here. He, he always wants to help me color my own, uh, my own drawings as if I cannot do it myself. <laughs> Uh, I had this idea to make a very colorful uh, book with pictures that are uh, a bit less, a bit less classical, or how can I say, put it, uh, a, a bit less traditional looking than uh, than the ones uh, of Brebella, which I'm very proud about and happy with, uh, but. One of the things the publishers have said it, when they said anything uh, in their rejection letters is that to their taste, um, the pictures of Rebella are a bit too uh, traditional or too realistic. And therefore I wanted to do something, yes, realistic, obviously, because that's just the way I work and a lot of uh, children books are realistic but a bit more modern when it comes to the use of color. Uh, also because I know that children do like uh, strong colors. So I was just trying out a bit with those crayons and I thought, well, you know, you get really nice texture and you can also mix it in a way like um, in here, you get the yellow, over the purple layer and you get a color that maybe you wouldn't expect to be so strong at least not not well I don't know what I'm saying but when I would uh, work in watercolor then it would just obviously look different and I really liked this strong and direct uh, way of communicating color um, yeah, it immediately came to me that the mother and a child would have to have very orange hair and um, I was just playing around a bit with, uh, with the colors and the faces and a bit of a character study. So I thought maybe I need some crayons. Well, very long story. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's uh, what I bought. Oh, so the weather is so nice um, right now. I almost feel stupid that I didn't go and paint outside, but I really think that uh, it might have been a cause of a lot of um, frustration because of all the clouds. Right now we have a piece of blue sky and as you can see in the background, the apple tree right here is very nice also um, just as in the orchard and um, guess I wanted to conclude this video uh, by mentioning once again the ways that as an artist you can be amongst people and uh, art lovers let's say um, so teaching for me is a really important part uh, also just going out there buying your supplies not online but in the store uh, going and uh, make reproductions made, uh, going to the frame maker, uh, try to have as, uh, as much contact with others as you want. Uh, obviously, right now uh, we live in a time in which you can do probably almost everything online, uh, but I think that uh, the best of uh, being an artist is that you still have a lot of live contact with others. Um, the 
thing I also want to do again uh, when maybe uh, when the days get darker at the end of the year is um, going to try and find some enthusiasts again to paint together from live model uh, so that is a thing anyone could organize you obviously you need a place uh, to do so if you have a large home then you can do it at home as well uh, but um, I'm sure that in your area also there are a lot of places for rent and when you split the costs for the rent and the model uh, then uh, it shouldn't be expensive to go and paint together and it's a very nice way uh, to share your passion with others I think. So the thing I would like to do um, more often uh, once the children are maybe uh, a bit more independent is uh, going and teach um, abroad. I taught this art retreat two years ago uh, when uh, Ephesio, my eldest, was two years old. And I really liked uh, being able to show, to share my passion and knowledge about plein air painting with others. Uh, and obviously it would be the best thing for me to go and uh, be on a beautiful inspired place and to share my enthusiasm with others uh, but not only for the painting and the beauty around us but also for food because if you might as you might have noticed in my previous videos I like uh, a lot to cook and uh, that's also why I like to paint things that are nice to eat <laughs> My ideal uh, art retreat would be one in which I would be able to teach, uh, to be a lot outside, but also to, uh, to be able to make <laughs> the food the, uh, the guests eat. So yeah, maybe that's a silly dream because I could not do everything. Or at least to give an art retreat on a place in which I uh, know that there will be served great food. <laughs> Oh, anyway, um, I just wanted to say thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then um, go and uh, subscribe for my channel. It really helps my channel to grow and to make it uh, more visible to people like you who are interested in this kind of content. And in the next uh, video, I hope that I will be able to share um, some actual painting process again. See you next time.